sit tight, don't move. GMAP1.com, yours truly, Pastor Kevin, always feeling good while the music is sounding blessed. And I tell you, when we get an opportunity to present a word from the Lord to you, we take every advantage of that beyond belief. And on today, once again, we're honored to have my friend and my brother here uh, with us. And, of course, he is going to be sharing some outstanding information with you. Of course, we thank God for those that are chimed in via our Comcast cable uh, platform, as well as those that are chimed in from uh, the additional radio station platforms around the world. We thank God for Pure Faith Outreach Ministries, PFOM TV, and, of course, all of you who are chimed in via the GMAP broadcast network, gmap One. Dot com. With no further ado, my friend, Mr. Wallace is here. Hey, brother, how you doing? All is well and getting better, sir. That's the story I'm sticking to. I'm not changing that, not even for my friend and brother Kevin. Uh-oh, you know what? If you do, man, I'm going to have to talk to you later, man. I tell you, don't change a thing. I kid you not. That's his story. He's sticking to it. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, with no further ado, man, I really appreciate you uh, taking time out on today to hang out with us here on the GMAP Broadcast Network. Once again, GMAP1.com. We're just so, I mean, overwhelmed with joy about what's taking place here on the GMAP Broadcast Network. And, of course, I'm going to say it officially, there's a new program alert on the way. New program alert on the way. New program alert on the way. I tell you, milk for babies, strong meat for grown-ups. I want you guys to prepare yourself to tune in every Thursday evening, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern, with my friend Mr. Wallace here on the GMAP Broadcast Network. No further ado, introduce yourself, man. Tell us who you are. Tell us where you're from. Yes, sir, Brother Kevin, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity again. Um, the Lord bless you, sir, and the work, the service that you are rendering to God's people in this um, arena of um, internet radio and um, televised broadcast. The Lord bless you, sir, and all that you have uh, in your heart, in your mind, the ambition that you have. Uh, the goals and the desires and aspirations that you have. May the Lord bless your socks off, sir, and blow your mind beyond your wildest dreams. Yes, I am Raul Neville Wallace. I'm originally from Jamaica, West Indies. I introduced maybe some of your audience a few weeks back, but I'll give a recap of that. Raul Wallace from uh, Manchester, Jamaica uh, in the West Indies. Uh, I was brought to the United States um, in uh, 1972 to join my mother. She left uh, me and my two oldest brother with my grandmother there in uh, Jamaica. And uh, she uh, brought us over to join her in 1972 there in Hartford, Connecticut. I uh, went to Annie Fisher, um, Annie Fisher Elementary School in Fox Middle, um, middle school. I don't know if it's still called Fox Middle. And then went on to high school at Hartford Public High School and graduated class of 1982. I joined the United States Air Force in 1985. And um, I've been here in North Carolina, came to um, Pope Air Force Base in Fayetteville, North Carolina in 1985. Met my beautiful wife, in uh, November of 1987, engaged her Christmas of uh, 1987, was ready to put a ring on her finger to, in marriage in January of um, 88, but she says that was too fast, so she put it off until June 11th, 1988. Uh, she's been my beautiful bride, my best friend, my girlfriend, and my wife, all in the same person, going on June 11th. 2021 will be 33 years of marriage. Amen. We have no children. It's just the two of us. We have um, uh, multiple uh, godchildren and nieces and nephews, but um, no biological children. So this way, uh, we've been on our honeymoon for the last 32, almost 33 years, and we'll probably consider coming home, settle down, and start a family sometime in the near future. 
but um, I retired from um, the Air Force here at Pope Air Force Base in uh, 2020. My wife is um, a DOD retired uh, civil servant. After 32 years, I served in the United States Air Force for 25 years and then retired in 2010. My wife followed retirement in 2017. And the ride since uh, retirement, real, we're really wondering why it took us so long to retire because we're really enjoying uh, the ride in retirement. I uh, retired and assumed an assistant pastoral ship here in Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina at Kingdom Impact Global Ministry. Um, under the leadership of uh, Apostle William T. Ford and co-pastor Glendora uh, Faulkner Ford here in Fayetteville at uh, Kingdom Impact Global Ministries. I recently relinquished the position, or let me say the title, not the duty and not the responsibility, but I recently relinquished the um, title of assistant pastor at Kingdom Impact Global Ministry, but I'm still serving there in the capacity of a minister, in the capacity of a servant leader. That is who I am. That is what causes me to um, want to get up in the morning and go through my day. That is my excitement. That is my joy in serving God's people in whatever manner I can to help, to aid, and to assist God's children, his sons and daughters, my brothers and sisters, to help whatever way I can um, so that is our joy. That is our life in retirement um, at this moment until I embarked on writing this book. And it's more than just the title of a book. I'll go a little bit further in there. So let me take a pause right now, sir, to give you an opportunity to get a word in. Oh, you know what? I'm not. You know what? I was going to sit back and enjoy every moment. Uh, and of course, we are grateful to have you here via the GMAP Broadcast Network. Of course, if you don't know, uh, now you know, of course, uh, we're all here. It's, uh, well, it's a, a, a part of our broadcast uh, network family via our featured authors. And, of course, uh, he's also getting himself prepared to disseminate an awesome, awesome program uh, to our broadcast network platform. We're grateful for that as well. And, of course, uh, we want you guys to prepare to tune in. Now, of course, we appreciate the book publication, and of course, we'll let you talk a little bit about that. But also, we want you to share a little bit about what people should expect as they prepare for this brand new program that's going to be airing here on the GMAP Broadcast Network. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, sir. You set me up so well. It's as though we rehearsed this thing. But uh, yes, um, milk for babes, strong meat for grown-ups. It's much more than just the title of my first, my um, what you would call a freshman project. Milk for Babes, Strong Meat for Grownups. It's more than just the title of a book. It is the staple of meat and strong, I mean, of milk and meat. It's not about milk and strong meat. That's not what the book is about. It's not about milk and strong meat, but rather the book is milk. The book is strong meat. And far beyond the binding of this book, there's a whole lot more to unpack of what's contained within the book. And unpack, I'll endeavor to do a little bit of with each upcoming broadcast as we move through the rest of this year. Now, yes, milk for babes, strong meat for grownups, but still I divert just a moment. There's a whole other category of believers to feed. Now, Milk belongs to babes and the meat, the strong meat belongs to grown up, but there's a whole other category uh, to feed. Those who we may consider, and forgive me, I don't intend to offend. Even when I offend, I never intend to offend, but please forgive me, don't be offended if I say um, there's a whole other category of believers those who would be considered special needs believers, remedial trainees believers, slow to learners 
believers, hard to catch owners, believers. I hinted to this category a little bit. I pointed, probably had to read closer. And if you already received a copy of my book, Milk for Babes, Strong Meat for Grownups, addressing everyday challenges from a biblical perspective. If you already read a bit of it, um, you may need to go back and read it because you may have missed it. I did hint a little bit to this category in the book, but it isn't the focus of the book. Nonetheless, this category of believers, they too also need our attention. And maybe someone listening would like to take up that responsibility or that assignment in addressing those until I can get around to focus my attention on them. But in this book, Milk for Babes, Strong Meat for Grownups, um, there are some unpacking that I will be doing over uh, the next few months on into the year um, as it pertains to the milk for the babes and strong meat. Uh, for the grown-ups. Now, this category that I did uh, not focus on in my book, let me speak to him, uh, Kevin. Just some food for thought here, Kevin, uh, just for a moment. Uh, consider a young couple who gives birth to a cognitively, de developmentally um, challenged or disabled child. Now, these new parents, they would never consider this child a burden. Never. A load, yes, but never a burden to bear because they gave to their newborn. They gladly accept and are willing to bear their load of this cognitively developmental, cha developmentally challenged or disabled infant. Now, so too, God in his patience carries those who we would term special needs, remedial, remedial, uh, slow learners, or the hard to catch honors. God, he carries them patiently. On the other hand, we, you know, as um, spiritual leaders, even just a believer, just a laity in the uh, church of uh, the, the Christ, uh, our Lord, uh, we at times uh, are not so, and we would be inclined to quickly become impatient with individuals such as these because we didn't give birth to them. They don't belong to us. Right. Uh, we don't feel um, that attachment or that bonding because we didn't give birth to them. But God, on the other hand, he gladly and he patiently and willingly carries those or carry them because they're his. Although I use the term them, please uh, forgive me here again. Although I use the term them, um, oftentimes them really is us That's right. who are the slow learners, the, the hard to catch honors, um, the re remedial, remedial trainees. Some God, he it is, he it is who gave birth to this category of believers. It is he who gave birth to them, the slow learners, hard to catch honors, uh, those remedi remedial um, trainees. God gave birth to them. So therefore, he bears the ultimate responsibility. He gladly and he patiently carries them because them or we belong to him. He gave birth to us. Therefore, because they, or should I say we are his, he fully and entirely um, bear the responsibility for all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't, and I'm spending this time here because I won't be really addressing this category so much, but I figure in this introduction, um, or this uh, presentation, this initiation of this new programming, I will speak to that a little bit and maybe give someone else who's listening who have the capacity to 
um, address more in detail and focus more attention to this category of believers will take on that responsibility until such time that I will be availed that um, privilege. Amen. But um, let me say on this Thursday, and please, uh, Brother Kevin, I did share with you from time to time that I can just go on because I'm full. And um, if the faucet becomes open, it will continue to trickle because I'm not empty. I'm, not, I'm going to tell you like this. Chime in at any time if you have a question, sir, I'm, just let me know. I'm going to tell you like but, this. I, I, I really, ahead, I am so much enjoying what it is so far that I'm hearing. And I'm going to do something that I really wasn't anticipating doing. But I'm going to move over and I'm going to allow you the next 45 minutes. I'm going to allow you to share in detail the intimate uh, information about your ministry, how people can support uh, with uh, purchasing a copy of the book, what it is we can anticipate during the weeks ahead, every Thursday at 6 p.m., 7 Eastern. I'm going to move on. I I'm, I'm just want to hear what God has incorporated and placed in and on your heart. I want you, hey, if you're led to minister to the people, I will never, ever take that away from you. But I am going to allow you that time to do and share what it is that God has placed in your spirit don't you for one second worry about me. I'm here to simply make sure that the people can receive what it is that God has placed in your heart. Once again, we're here on the GMAP broadcast network. Yours truly, Pastor Kevin, and we're grateful, we're honored, and we are privileged to have uh, Mr. Wallace here with us on today. He's going to be sharing and giving you a snippet of what you should anticipate in the weeks, months, and even years ahead via the GMAP Broadcast Network, and of course, this awesome new program. Mr. Wallace, the floor is yours. Brother Pastor Kevin, you are so generous, sir. Thank you so much. Um, my gratitude, I am indebted to you um, throughout this lifetime. But of course, uh, you don't have to wait until I get to you with whatever I'm indebted to you for because the Lord bless you, sir. The Lord can uh, sustain you. The Lord preserve you. The Lord uphold you. And the Lord keeps you and bless you real good. Thank you so much again for the opportunity. Now, this is a copy of my book. It's called Milk or titled Milk for Babes, Strong Meat for Grownups. Subtitled, Addressing Everyday Challenges biblical perspective. Now, there are quite a few who may be listening who have already purchased a copy of my book, either through um, Amazon.com or Barnes and Noble or uh, Zulon Press. Zulon Press is um, based in uh, Florida. Zulon, that's X-U-L-O-N-P-R-E-S-S, -S, one word, Zulon Press. Dot com. You can get a copy there as well, as well as on the GMAP um, website. If you'll go to the bookstore, you'll be able to see my book there that you can purchase um, from uh, on, online through uh, the various uh, media um, that is accessible to you. Also, if you desire to get a personalized of this book, Strong Meat for Babes, I mean, milk for babes and strong meat for grownups. If you desire a personally autographed copy, you may contact me via Facebook. You can find me in Facebook as Raul, R-A-U-L-N for Neville, N Wallace, W-A-L-L-A-C-E. You'll hit me up in Facebook. Um, you can inbox me uh, through Facebook Messenger, or also you can send me an email at uh, R W I S. W E L L at hotmail.com. That's R W I S W E L L at hotmail.com. That R W is for 
Raul Wallace as well at hotmail.com because I am well and getting better all the time. And if you email me, if you me or just contact me through Facebook, you can have a copy of this book autographed by me, the author, for $15 if you are local in the uh, Cumberland County or Fayetteville area for $15 or wherever you are in the United States and you decide uh, or desire a copy uh, of this book autographed by me, I can mail it to you for one copy for $18.50. $18.50 to mail you a copy anywhere in the United States, just one copy. And if you contact me via those uh, venues, I'll be so glad to get a copy of this book in your hands. Now, as we move through the year with this new programming, I will be addressing um, numerous um, topics, numerous subject matters, and address briefly um, in this book. A lot of what you would read in this book is just a synopsis. But with this new programming, my intention is to unpack um, a lot of what is so condensed in this book's uh, milk for babes, strong meat for grown-ups. I will be unpacking um, much of that, and I'm sure I have no um, doubt at all that you will be blessed um, by this programming because I do intend to minister. I do intend to pour out milk, the milk of God's word. I do intend to serve up strong meat for God's people, the strong meat of the word that by the milk of the word and the meat of the word that we are strengthened, we are renewed, we are revived, we are restored, we are equipped, and we are conditioned by the milk of God's word and the meat of God's word. And that's what I intend to be doing, um, serving milk and serving strong meat throughout the entirety of this programming. So I do ask, I solicit um, your participation in um, sharing uh, this new programming, uh, hitting up your friends, your family members, other believers, even unbelievers, sharing this link, gmap1.com, with all who you know. And please um, link with this message out that every Thursday, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time and 6 p.m. Central Time, I will be sharing, I will be delivering, I will be serving milk and strong meat every Thursday evening as the Lord gives us this opportunity. So that's what we'll be doing um, throughout uh, the rest of the year, every Thursday night is serving milk. I'll be drinking some along with you. It'll be somewhat of a communion, a fellowship meal. It will be um, a somewhat of a virtual um, feet washing service where I will be serving you. I'll be washing your feet, uh, sir, uh, metaphorically, um, every Thursday as you tune in. So I please ask that you would um, share this with all who you know, because there will be no one who would tune in, who will click on uh, gmap1.com to view every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central time. There'll be no one who will tune in during this half an hour period who will not receive milk or and or strong meat. So please help me share that word. Someone tuning in um, every Thursday, you tuning in every Thursday, and I'll be so uh, glad and excited for that. Uh, Brother uh, Kevin, if you'll just chime in, please, for one moment. So will this be shared via the YouTube after the airing of each program? Absolutely. Every week, uh, once the program is complete, we're also going to be uploading it to our YouTube channel. And if you insist, we'll also push it over uh, for you to incorporate on your 
respective Facebook location as well. So, yes, it will be uh, uploaded to YouTube and available after the program each week. Thank you so much, sir. You are just so generous. That's why you are so blessed. Now, um, if you will, sir, please, if I do get that um, on my Facebook page so that I can also share that I'm much appreciated along with that, um, uh, the YouTube um, sharing as well. So it is Thursday. It is Holy Week, we would say, not would say, we do say. It is Holy Week. Um, it is the week um, where we actually celebrate uh, the various stages of our Lord's um, pro proceeding or his processing to the cross um, on Friday evening. And it is so timely that here it is Thursday, what we term as um, on this day, Thursday, uh, a day in Christendom in which, uh, on which we recognize as Maudy Thursday or Holy Thursday, um, the Thursday uh, before Jesus's crucifixion. It is thing that this new programming for me is being launched on this Maudy, uh, Maudy Thursday, this Holy Thursday the Thursday before the crucifixion of our Lord, uh, God's Christ, our savior, our redeemer. Uh, we commemorate uh, the ceremony in which our Lord, the Christ, Christ the Lord, um, he instituted on this Thursday, this Maundy Thursday, Christ instituted the Lord's Supper the Last Supper, what we know as the Holy Communion. To some, the Eucharist. It was a third um, such as this that we are commemorating, that we are celebrating uh, this week, this Maundy Thursday, on which Christ uh, instituted the communion, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, uh, the Eucharist. We call to mind in memoriam, memoriam of uh, this ceremony or this Maundy uh, Thursday, we call to mind our Lord's reclining at a table with his disciples. He's reclining in this setting, I, we believe on the floor in somewhat maybe a semi-circle not, I would believe, I wouldn't say a complete circle uh, with the 12 seated in, I would say maybe a circle, a horseshoe shape more like. Jesus, our Lord, is reclining there at this table with his disciples, taking part in what uh, we know as a fellowship meal. Jesus sitting down with the 12, as you're sitting with me, I'm sitting with you. In no way am I even close to Jesus seated with you. I'm just seated with you at the table where our Lord is serving from. And here we have on this Maundy Thursday, our Lord seated with his disciples, commemorating or more so instituting this Last Supper, this Lord's Supper, this communion, this, this fell over this fellowship meal, breaking bread with his disciples. And after which, in the scripture, we read that Jesus, he rose from supper on this Thursday, this Maundy Thursday, this Holy Thursday. Jesus, after sharing in this fellowship meal, after instituting the Lord's Supper, he rose from the table and he somewhat, somewhere obtained an empty basin. And he filled the empty basin with water. And he began to wash his disciples' feet. And of course, we're familiar with Peter saying, no, Lord, you can't wash my feet. And Jesus responds saying, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, 
and um, you're not beyond, you're not above me washing your feet. Now, Jesus, him being the leader, of course, being their Lord, um, it would have been more appropriate for the disciples to wash his feet. But no, Jesus initiated it. He filled the empty basin with water on this Monday Thursday and he wrapped a towel around his waist and he commenced to washing his disciples' feet. The ultimate, the highest degree of service that one could um, be involved in. The Lord, the Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior, God, the God-man, he and began to wash and wipe his disciples' feet. The ultimate, uh, the highest degree of servant leadership, a true servant leader, Jesus demonstrated himself to be. Now, on this Monday Thursday, a day on which we're launching this new programming that uh, will be um, ongoing uh, Lord's will throughout the remainder uh, of the year, Launching this new programming on Monday, Thursday, um, of Milk for Babes, Strong Meat for Grownups. Launching this program today, I solemnly commit to you, every listener who will tune in every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Central, I mean, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Time. Every listener who listens in, who um, views or listens on upcoming Thursdays, I commit to you. I am committing to communing with each of you listeners or viewers on every broadcast. That is a commitment that I am making with this new programming. I commit to commune with each of you listeners or viewers on every broadcast of this program every Thursday. That is a commitment and you can hold. I gave you my email address and you can find me on Facebook. And if you ever tune in on a Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern time or 6 p.m. Central time, and you're not getting some milk or some meat, I need you to hit me up on Facebook, Facebook Messenger me, send me an email and say, Pastor Wallace, you're missing it, sir. We need to get back on course. Because you know, sometimes we do need that nudging. I do have my wife. And before any of you contact me by Facebook, before any of you would contact me by Facebook Messenger, or by sending me an email, my wife would have long beat you to it to say, baby, we need to get back on course. Because that is what I'm committed. The moment I cease to do that, that's the moment I need to just cease and desist with this uh, programming. And that is coming from my heart. You hear it from my mouth, but it's coming from my heart where you can't see it. So that is what I'm committing to do, just as Jesus communed with his disciples on this Maundy Thursday. I'm committing to commune with you on every upcoming Thursday during this live broadcasting. I commit to celebrating a fellowship meal with you, as Jesus did with his disciples on this Maundy Thursday. Thursday, as he instituted the communion, and we continue it on in 2021, I'm committing to you on this Monday, Thursday, that I will celebrate with you in this fellowship meal of serving milk and strong meat every Thursday. I will be serving you. I am not here to be served. I am here to serve you. All I need is for you 
to be on time and in the room, in the right place, in your vehicle, have your radio, have your television, have your device, devices tuned in to gmap1.com at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central every Thursday evening. And we will share together in this, just as Jesus shared with his disciples, this fellowship meal. I will be sharing with you each week as we have a drink or take a bite. As we have a drink of the milk of the word or as we take a bite of the strong meat of the word every Thursday evening. This is what I am here right now on, uh, what is this, April 1st. It's not an April Fool's joke, y'all. I know it is April Fool, and we're uh, so accustomed to a lot of April Fool jokes being played on us, but this is not an April Fool's joke. This is a Maundy Thursday, a Holy Thursday commitment that I'm making with you, the audience, the listeners, the viewers, milk for babes and strong meat for grown-ups to be aired every Thursday evening. I am committing to sharing with you in this fellowship meal every Thursday evening. And I do pray, I do have my hopes on and my desire in uh, for you to share it with as many as you can to tune in along with you and along with me as we share in this weekly fellowship meal. Having a drink or taking a bite together every Thursday. And I'm telling you, it is milk to be drunk and it is strong meat to be chewed on and to be digested. So this is my commitment. I humbly demonstrate myself in the act of serving you. Serving you by way of maybe call it a virtual uh, weekly metaphorical feet washing ceremony. Just as Jesus, after they had this fellowship meal, he got up and he began to serve. He put on servanthood, filling the basin with water, receiving a towel and wrapping it around himself kneeling down at his disciples' feet as they're reclining there on the floor, and he began washing their feet. The ultimate act of servant leadership. That is what you can expect every Thursday evening at this time. Seven, well, not at this time, I'll be off by now, but seven till 7.30 or six till 6.30, depending on what time zone uh, you're in. I will be serving you in this metaphorical feet washing ceremony every Thursday evening, each time that we meet together during this broadcast of this programming. That is what I endeavor to do. And you know what? What I understand, um, and I speak now to those who. Um, are strong meat eaters. And I would say, I would um, dare say, and I don't believe I'm at all incorrect in saying this, every pastor, every evangelist, every prophet, every teacher, every apostle, uh, every deacon, um, every seasoned believer, should be eating meat. And I understand that um, sometimes we get full of ourselves. I know there are times I get full of myself and Holy Spirit has to bring that to my attention and settle me down so that I'll stop floating and get my feet down on the surface to realize I'm not all of that and a bag of chips. But there are some times we are inclined to get full of ourselves, get beyond, feel as though, and I'm speaking as an elder, as a minister 
of the gospel of Christ as a meat eater myself, as a pastor, I'm speaking to others and all the uh, seasoned saints who have been chewing on strong meat, the strong meat of the word for a while. Um, not that we don't drink milk every now and then because milk is a part of our diet. We still need that. But the, the most part of us who are eating strong meat, please don't tune me off, tune, tune me out or turn me off because um, you can do what I'm doing yourself. I'm sitting down at times, many times, listening and receiving the meat, receiving the milk, maybe from some of you who may be on um, television or um, uh, ministering on social media. Please don't turn me off because you figure you can do this too. And I'm sure you can. And there's a host of you that's watching, that's listening right now, who can do this. Oh, so much more effective so much better than I am or I can but I tell you one thing you can't do it like I do it you can't do it like I do now you do it good you do it well you do a fantabulific job at doing it the way you do it and I can never match you in doing it the way you do it but I tell you one thing you'll never match me in doing it the way I do it because this is tailor-made for me this is a garment that I didn't go into a, a department store and purchase off the rack or off the shelf. This was personally tailor made for me. And after it was tailor made and I went for the fitting, the, the dressmaker, Holy Spirit, my heavenly father, Jesus the Christ, I went in for my fitting and he saw that I still needed some things to be tapered, some things to be tailored. And I took off the garment or certain times I keep the garment on and he tapers it to my fitting, to my form. So what I do is not off the shelf. It is tailor made. It is form fitting. And you can never fit my garment just like I can never fit your garment. What I'm saying is, because I do it the way I do it, please don't turn me off, but please drink with us and eat with us and you will be satisfied. You will not be disappointed. I stated that, or I started to say that because I understand that the disciples, if you'll recall, while they were walking, they were journeying with the Lord on um, a journey. They were on a journey with the Lord. And uh, they, the disciples, a few of them were really somewhat in contention. They were in contention about who will be the greatest. Who will be the greatest? And I can imagine there were certain apostles, especially the three insiders, you know, Peter, James and John, the, the three that were the closest to Jesus, imagine they figured they had a few notches on the others. So I believe maybe one of those three uh, inner circle ones probably felt that, you know, they were uh, better off than the others. So they were um, somewhat uh, contending on who will be the greatest. And Jesus knew what was going on, but Jesus just allowed them. He permitted them to go on with their dis discourse, with their back and forth, with their juggling. Jesus heard, understood, knew what was going on, but didn't address it at all. Once they got to where they were going, Jesus said, now, boys, what was it that you all were arguing about? What were you arguing about? Now, I just imagine how shocked they were to know or to come to realize Jesus overheard what was going on. Jesus overheard who was saying they were better than the other, who was saying that they can do this better than the other. Mm, 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 mm. Now, <laughs> Jesus said, what were you arguing about on the way? Huh? They got became silent because they knew they were arguing about who would be the greatest. 
And Jesus took advantage of that. He made it a very teachable moment. What did Jesus do? Jesus being the greater, being the Lord, being the master, being the redeemer, being the savior, being the Christ. Jesus gave them a very, utilized that as a very teachable moment for his disciples. What did he do? After supper, normally the feet washing or the foot washing would have been done by a servant of the house. But you see, there were no servants there. It was just Jesus and the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles. So there were no servants. So I imagine all of them with their dirty feet sitting around the table, all of them with their dirty feet came and sat at the table. None of them thought to get a basin and begin to wash their own feet or even wash someone else's feet because they all thought they were the greatest. So they, I believe, were so full of themselves that they figured they'll pull up to the table and feast with the Lord with their dirty feet and all because they self. And Jesus utilized this as a very teachable moment on this Maundy Thursday, this Holy Thursday, after he has instituted the communion, Jesus got up and say, boys, let me show you how a leader do it. Let me show you how a, a, a servant leader do it. You get up, you take the initiative, get a empty basin, fill it with water, get a towel, and you take the initiative and begin to wash one another's feet. So, hmm. You who may be um, so probably my eat or even been doing this so much longer than I have and can do it so much better than I can, please don't tune me out. Because after I get through washing your feet or after you get through washing my feet, I want to turn around and wash yours. And I would hope you would turn around and wash mine. And this is what I intend to be doing every Thursday is to serve you by washing your feet, to demonstrate to you what servanthood is. So after we would serve up the milk and the meat, after you drink and after you eat, in this fellowship meal, I desire to worship, fellowship, serve, and at times maybe even be served by you afterwards or a text message or Facebook messenger. I will so much appreciate that. Now, there's so much more I can go on with, Brother Kevin. I did warn you, I can go on for hours. But I'll do this. I'll pause here until next week. And I'll pause here to do what? To listen. I pause here to reflect. And I pause here to prepare until uh, we begin or until we meet again in this room. Brother Kevin, if you will chime in, sir, um, oh, you may take the mic Man. back. Because, um, he say, take the mic you're gonna have back. To, go ahead and wrench it out of my hand, sir. Pull it out of my hand. Go ahead. <laughs> Man, oh man, oh man. I'm just so excited and we thank God for you, man. I'm looking for, you know what? I am going to be one that is truly looking forward to what it is that God has in store. Going to be able to chime in myself and, and get fed and, and drink. And I tell you, I'm just so excited for your presence. We thank God for you. And of course, we want you to know that if there's anything that we can do to assist you on your journey, the answer is always yes, and we you will never have to ask us twice. We thank God for you. We thank God for all of our viewers and listeners. Until next week, before we let you go, I just want to say a quick one. Heavenly Father, our Father, our God, we come to you once again on this day, first and foremost, as we always should, to simply say thank you. We thank you for this divine connection. We thank you for this awesome man of God. We're asking right now you continue to bless him according to your will and not ours. As a matter of fact, oh God, we're asking you to bless all those that are connected to him in the name of Jesus, guiding us down that pathway of salvation and righteousness, giving us the strength to do 
your will, to do your works, and to do it your way. We thank you on today. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify your name on today. We thank and we praise you on this day. We praise and we thank you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the mighty name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We love you, Mr. Wallace, and we look forward to hearing from you again very soon. I'll be touching base with you soon to let you know how things are going. And until next time, I want you to do two things. Be blessed and be a blessing.